All right, let's take a look at our uh, first Rayleigh's Law problem, uh, exercise one from chapter 11 from the course textbook. So we're told we have a vapor mixture of acetone and nitromethane with the uh, so vapor phase composition of uh, 0.7 mole frac, so component one, initially at a pressure of seven bars and 110 degrees C, this to be liquefied by compression under constant temperature. At what pressure does the system fully become a liquid? Calculate the last bubble that condenses, What's the fugacity of nitromethane in the liquid when the system is at the conditions of part A? We can assume the system behaves according to Rayleigh's law. Great. And we're told that the saturation pressure of pure acetone and nitromethane at 110 degrees C is 463 kilopascals and 132.4 kilopascals, respectfully. All right, so this piece of information at the bottom at 110 degrees C this would give me P1 sat. This would correspond to P2 sat. So P1 sat is greater than P2 sat at a given temperature. So component one is in fact our most volatile component. Okay, so we're given uh, the temperature and the two corresponding uh, pure component saturation pressures. Then up here, right in this first line, or uh, first sentence here, we're told that we have a vapor that we're gonna liquefy by compression under constant temperature. So it tells me we're gonna go from vapor to liquid by changing pressure, keeping temperature constant. So immediately I'm thinking about a PXY phase diagram. Uh, so remember I've suggested to you before, uh, before you jump into trying to solve the problem, the first thing you should do is take a second and try and draw the relevant phase diagram for your system. It doesn't matter how well you can draw, it doesn't matter if you have an ideal or non-ideal system, draw a phase diagram for an idealized system to the best of your ability and at least use that as an aid to try and walk through the problem and figure out exactly what it is that you need and how to go about calculating it. Okay, so here, okay, I'm immediately thinking about a PXY. Okay, so let me see if I can sketch a PXY on my tab. Okay, so looking at our pure component limits, okay, I have a PXY where temperature is 110 degrees C. Okay, there's P1 sat. Okay. For an ideal system, my bubble line is going to be a straight line between P1 sat and here's P2 sat. Okay, and we've got P1 sat and P2 sat up here. And here's my dew line, okay, which I'm just going to draw as a curved line. High pressures are going to form a liquid, favor a liquid phase, so I have liquid up here vapor on the bottom and two phase in between. Okay, cool. Now, looking at what's given in the problem statement, okay, we're told we have a mixture at a composition 0.7. Okay, let's see where my cursor is. So I'm gonna draw, let's just say a line of constant composition. Okay, and you know, we're gonna be somewhere down here in the vapor phase. So we'll just say Y1, and actually to keep consistent with the notation we've used, I'm going to use Z1 is equal to 0 0.7, okay? Um, and then the other piece of information we're given um, in the problem statement is we're told that our pressure is initially seven bars. And looking at that now, I think that this must be uh, a typo in the book, okay? And why I say that is I know that one bar is equal to 10 to the five pascals where, let's see, one kilopascal is, what, 1,000 pascals. Okay, so one bar must be equal to 10 to the 2 kilopascals, because that's 100 kilopascals. Okay, so a pressure of 7 bars then would be equal to 700 kilopascals, okay? And so looking at P1 set and P2 set, okay? And remember my bubble line is gonna be a straight line that goes between P1 set and P2 set, okay? If my system is already at 700 bars, well, that's totally in the liquid phase, right? There's no need to uh, change the pressure to try and liquefy it. Uh, it is already definitely <laughs> a liquid. Okay, so let's, you know, maybe ignore this for now. Okay, maybe it should have been 0.7 bars. Uh, I don't know. 
but it doesn't really matter, all right? So in the problem statement, we're told we have a vapor mixture, okay? So we're gonna be um, down you know, here below my dew line, okay? The 110 degrees C just tells us uh, which PXY phase diagram I'm looking at and what the relevant P2 and P1 set are. And then in A, okay, so A we're asked, at what pressure does the system fully become a liquid? Okay, well, so if, say I initially have this vapor mixture, you know, here, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna keep temperature constant. I'm gonna stay, stay on this PXY phase diagram, but I'm gonna increase the pressure, all right? And so what happens is I increase the pressure, I move up, all right, on this line of constant composition. Okay, so what happens as I move up, right? Well, as I move up, okay, where I hit my dew line, okay, that's the dew point of my mixture. So if I have a vapor and I'm increasing the pressure until I hit my dew line, okay, that's gonna be when my first liquid drop in theory forms. Okay, again, it's a theoretical limit. As I continue to increase the pressure, okay, so above my dew line, or my dew point, until I hit my bubble point, or I have a system in two-phase equilibrium, so I have a liquid in equilibrium with a vapor, okay? And then when I hit my bubble line, okay, this is gonna correspond to, you know, going from this direction, when the last vapor um, bubble condenses, right? And so from my bubble line, so from my bubble point for that mixture, and all pressure is greater than my bubble point, I'll have a single liquid phase, all right? So at my bubble point and above, I am all liquid, okay? What's unique about my bubble point is that, okay, my bubble point's still technically in the two-phase region, okay? I read off liquid compositions from my uh, bubble line, vapor compositions from my dew line, and what I find is that at my bubble point, my liquid phase composition is just equal to the composition, composition of my mixture, right? x one's equal to Z1, okay? Cool, and so that's why, you know, if this were a flash drum operating at my bubble point, everything's coming out liquid, right? Because that liquid composition is just equal to my uh, mixture composition. You know, nothing's coming out as a, as a vapor phase. So when I look at problem A then, okay, what problem A would want us to calculate or would want to know is what's the bubble point pressure for that mixture? Because for all pressures greater at my bubble point and greater, um, I have a liquid. So my bubble point pressure would be the minimum pressure that I would need to compress that system to um, so that I solely have a liquid phase. Okay, cool. Okay, and why I'm looking at my bubble point, right? So all pressure is greater than my bubble point. I'll have a liquid mixture. I'm gonna focus in on my bubble point because technically here, I still have a two phase system at coexistence. Okay, so my criteria phase coexistence still applies. We're here, we're told to apply Rayleigh's law, right? We're gonna use Rayleigh's law for our isophagacity expression, right? Our criteria of chemical equilibrium, okay? All right, so if I have a system of two-phase coexistence, I'm gonna write down my isophagacity equation. Here, we're told to apply Rayleigh's law. So I have Y1P is equal to X1, P1 sat. Y2P is equal to X2, P2 sat, okay? and we're gonna perform what's called a bubble P calculation, okay? So what's meant by a bubble P calculation, okay? All right, what's meant by a bubble P calculation is, okay, let's start at the right-hand side, okay? X1 and X2. I know what X1 and X2 are. I know what they are because I know that at my bubble point, my liquid composition is just equal to the composition of my mixture. So since we know the composition of our mixture is 0.7, well, then I know um, X1 is 0.7 and X2 is 0.3, right? I know that X1 and X2 because they're just equal to the composition of my mixture I started with, okay? I know P1 sat, I know P2 sat, okay? Looking at the left-hand side then, right? I have P is unknown, and then I have Y1 and Y2, right? So technically I have three unknowns, two equations with three unknowns, um, but I usually don't think of it that way because you know, I know that Y1 plus Y2 is equal to one, right? I have a constraint equation. So in theory, you could think of this, uh, I then have three equations with three unknowns, that I could solve for P, Y1, and Y2. Okay, cool, okay. I'm gonna write or erase this, you know, mole fractures have to sum to one, because um, typically, at least, you know, 
until we get to multiple, multiple, more than two components, I don't typically think about it because um, it's a little unnecessary. Okay, so in theory, right, I could solve the system of equations for you know y1 and p. Um, but what's meant by a bubble p calculation is eh, initially I don't care about y; all I care about is p. Okay, and so the trick of a bubble p calculation, right, where my goal is to solve for p. Okay, because this will give us p bubs. All right, I know I'm at my bubble point when my mixture composition is equal to my liquid phase composition. Uh, and so the trick of a bubble p calculation is I'm going to add these two equations together because it'll allow me to eliminate y. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I have y1 p plus y2 p is x1 p1 sat plus x2 uh, p2 sat. And so, well, p is you know the same; it's constant. So p times y1 plus y2 is equal to x1 p1 sat plus x2 p2 sat. Okay, y1 plus y2 is equal to one. So I'm left with p, okay, which in this case is p bubs. It's just equal to x1 p1 sat plus x2 p2 sat. Okay, where here you can replace x1 and x2 with z1, okay, the composition of my mixture. So in A then, I just need to calculate p bubs when x1 is equal to 0.7. Okay, cool. All right, so that's A. Okay, but while I'm on the topic, okay, let's look at this expression in another way. Okay, so if I look at my pxy phase diagram, okay, for a given x, okay. I can now calculate p bubs. Okay, what I see is p bubs is just a linear combination of my two pure component vapor pressures. Okay, and put another way, is I know that x two is just one minus x one. So if I plug that in, I get p bubs is equal to x one p one sat plus one minus x one p two sat. So that'll be equal to uh, x1 times p1 sat plus p2 sat. No, p1 sat minus p2 sat plus p2 sat. Okay. And so what I find, right, as we've said before, for an ideal system, my bubble line is just a straight line between p1 sat and p2 sat. Okay, so that's already suggested by your equation block boxed in. If I want to think just in terms of component one, I lost my cursor. All right, here we go. All right, so I get p bubs. I, for p bubs, I get an equation of a straight line. Okay, so I have a y-axis intercept of p two sat. Okay, which is here. Okay, and I have a slope of p one sat minus p two sat. All right, cool. So for an ideal system, so uh, uh, remember. Rayleigh's law, we're assuming that our liquid phase is ideal. Okay, so when we have an ideal um, liquid or an ideal solution, so a system that obeys Rayleigh's law, um, then I'm going to have uh, my bubble line is going to be a straight line. Okay, so um, when I have a bubble line that is a straight line between P1 sat and P2 sat, that screams to me that my system is ideal. Okay, we'll talk about when our bubble line deviates from that straight line in uh, chapter 12, right? or maybe if I get off tangent in, in some of these problems. Okay, B, calculate the last bubble that condenses. Okay, well, we said at my bubble point, um, at my bubble point, essentially, you know, I'm, it, so coming at it from low pressure up to high, that's gonna correspond to um, the pressure at which my last vapor bubble condenses. So what I take this as then is calculate the last bubble that condenses is, okay, you just calculated P bubs, the bubble point pressure, uh, calculate Y1, right? The vapor composition of that last bubble that condenses. Um, and you can do that in a number of ways, right? I guess the easiest would be since we just calculated uh, P and now I want Y1. Well, Y1, okay, I just go up to my first Rayleigh's law expression. It's just X1, P1 sat, divided by p, okay, this is p bubs. 
So again, since x1 is 0.7, I know x1 is the composition of my mixture. I know p1 sat, I just calculated p buffs. Um, I can use that to calculate y1. Okay, cool. All right, we're on fire. Uh, C, what's the fugacity of nitromethane in the liquid when the system's at the conditions of part A? Okay, so it's important to remember here is when I write Rayleigh's law, uh, this is essentially just an isofugacity expression, right? So the idea in C is when I have a system at two phase coexistence, then the fugacity of you know component one and my vapor is equal to the fugacity of component one in the liquid. Okay. When I have a system that I'm assuming obeys Rayleigh's law, well then I'm assuming the vapor phase is an ideal gas. So F1V is just Y1P. And in terms of liquid phase, I'm assuming that uh, pointing correction is negligible um, and uh, pure component one at saturation at the same T. Uh, for that system, vapor phase um, is an ideal gas as well. So pointing correction is negligible. Uh, vapor phase uh, for pure component one at saturation at that T is also an ideal gas. And then we're assuming we have an ideal solution. All right. So that's where I get X1, P1 sat. So if I'm asked to calculate F1V or F1L, it doesn't really matter. Um, I could do F1V is equal to Y1 uh, times P, okay, where this would be P bubs, okay, and Y1 would just be you know the Y1 I just computed. Okay. Or what might be easier is that's just going to be equal to X1 times P1 sat. Okay. So that would just be 0.7 times p1 sat. Okay, they should give you exactly um, the same thing. Okay, and I guess you know if you were to plug that in here, you would you would see exactly that. Okay, so that that's problem one.